welcome to Off the Vine. I'm your host, Caitlin Bristow, and today on the podcast, we have Adley, who has gone from everything to country music, to rock bottom, to in debt, to viral and successful and making money and now teaching you how to do it. So enjoy. Just to start this podcast off on the right foot. Speaking yeah. of feet, I mean, the glasses are just working for you, first of all. I mean, this is already my favorite podcast I've ever been on. <laughs> I do those for people if they, like, want to say something, but they're nervous to say something. It's like Big Daddy when the little kid puts on his glasses, and then you can say whatever you want. Great. Oh, safety goggles. Yeah, safety Great. goggles. Um, so <laughs> uh, I have my producer in my ear when I do mm-hmm. podcasts in case she's like, oh, don't forget to say that, or that, yeah. like, you missed this. And... She just said, okay, um, if you're going to take off your shoes, just don't play with your toes. <laughs> and then I was like, she said it so casually. And then I went, oh my gosh, I do play with my you toes. Do. You sit here and I just... sit here and I like pick and I play with them. Yeah. It's okay. I bet people love it. Oh my gosh. No, I she, bet it, it's She great. cuts it out. It's just more work for her. <sighs> I'm Lisa, I don't know. You might try leaving that. You, you might try leaving that in there. Yeah, tr- see what happens. Uh huh. Totally yeah. different demo. We could that get the, we could do, yeah, we could get a whole new audience. Uh huh. We creepy. do that sometimes in videos. Like if people are contemplating being barefoot or not, we'll say, "Keep your keep your shoes off." It, it, it attracts Does a totally it, different group of people. Is that real? Mm-hmm. Oh yes, it's real. You're telling me if I post a pic of my feet, you think I'll and like hashtag something? You don't. You don't even have to just be feet exclusive. Like your feet could just be in the photo, and there are people out there that like scour for that. And we'll just find your feet and then sell pictures of your feet if you're not already Do doing I get the it. money? No. Oh, sad. I don't know. Keep well, those socks on. I have had this conversation on my podcast before where I'm on WikiFeet and I have a great mm-hmm. rating. Yeah. So I was like kind <laughs> of Celebrity feet finder. So that, I don't even know how I know this stuff. It's embarrassing, but it happens. You just figure out. Because you have to you know this enough. stuff for your job. Yeah. Does it get more views if the feet are in there? It sure does. Yeah. Take off the shoes. It's a sad reality. Oh, my god. You just watch the line move. We're like, oh, we're not going to do that. And then you're like, if it adds two million yeah. views to the bottom line, do yeah. you show your feet? Yes. Yeah. With their feet. That's just so interesting. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Adley, thank you for coming here. Um, you came on the podcast a very long time ago. Or was that just a conversation we had on somebody else's podcast together? That was a conversation we had on somebody else's. Oh. I think I had to second guess myself there. But, you know, you were hosting something with someone else, and then I was a guest oh, yeah. speaker. What was that about? Was that 2020, like COVID times? Mm-hmm. It was wow. a women's something. Panel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably some sort of panel. Um, okay, well, for people watching or listening at home, how do you, like, describe where you came from and what you do? This is taking me so long to distill down. <laughs> um, I know. Uh, we make viral videos as a job. I can say that yeah, now. For a while, do. it was singing. That's what brought me into Nashville, was in the music industry, and then realized I don't want to wait for permission from a suit behind the desk to be like, okay, now you. Now you can perform. Now you can go. So while we were touring, uh, With I was Blake Shelton. Yeah, we, and this was like four years after I was on The Voice and on his team that I got to go back out with That's him. That's so cool. It was really cool. I mean, it is so frustrating that it was definitely on their watch and schedule and when you could do this and do that. And yeah. those contracts are tight mm-hmm. uh, and like don't allow you, but still freaking cool that yes. you were on The Voice and then Blake Shelton's team and then you tour with him. But yeah. continue. And because I never would have had that opportunity because I was an independent artist the whole time. Yeah. So... I, I just felt very lucky to do that. But still, internally, I was like, I don't think I'm the best singer in the world. And entertainment was always the goal. Music was just like the vessel, the first ah. one I was given. And so then started making videos while on the road and put chickens in a bathtub one night. Oh. And it got 19 million views. Oh. It was like a 20 second video. Overnight, grew me 100,000 followers. And I was like, You're like I, wow, this is a thing. Yeah. Because with music, every I felt like I'm always having to self-promote or just always talk about, hey guys, records out, tell yeah, your friends, yeah. versus me just genuinely being myself, doing something that I was willing to do just on my own, just right. that I thought just was funny. Giving some chickens a bath, and that's what resonated. Wow, I and always that, wonder, like, what is it? Because you can spend like five hours with an expensive videographer and like put so much effort into it and like spend all day shooting for it to not get as many and then you can literally take 20 second video and go viral and like start your career yeah 
I think it's the relatability factor. Like even yeah. how we come up with ideas now is we'll take relatable concepts like uh, couples, relationship struggles, yeah. frustrations, and then, okay, how do we 10X that? What do couples fight about? Um, I want pets and he doesn't want pets. So I'm going to 10X that struggle and turn our apartment into a barnyard for a day. <laughs> And do a prank. And then all the comments are just filled with, oh, my God, this is so us. I would so do this. Yes. And you just took something that people are used to feeling yep. more so than they can't relate to the super professional behind That's the scenes true. of this part of life. You know, like I try because I am like a wackadoodle and I am do weird things. Yeah. But I always am like. Do I, do I put that out there? Or are people going to be like, she is out of her mind because then I do like. I feel like that makes sense, though, because as soon as I do, like, a curated post and, like, perfect and all this, mm -hmm. it's like, nah. We want the real Caitlin back. Because you've shown enough of either. that side of yourself. Like, when I'm scrolling, I don't want to see the perfectly curated mm -hmm. stuff. I do for, like, businesses and stuff. Like, um, yeah. you know, like, for my wine label, I like it to be pretty, but I also like it to be silly. But for me, I'm like, I need to just let my freak flag fly a little more. Because that's what people relate to. They're like, oh, my yeah. gosh, Caitlin's not so different than me. Right? right? you got all this amazing stuff going on. You've accomplished so much. But you, at your core, are not that different right. than everybody else. I think that's else. why people get so attached to people on the bachelor and like the voice and the, yeah. because they're like they're not these a-list actors who have security around them and like you can't relate yeah. to them you can mm -hmm. relate to people on reality tv and because you see the tears you see the vulnerability yeah. you see the the nasty parts of people in some cases too so yeah. it's just it's i think it all comes down to relatability it's That's why true. people love um like presidents or anybody that we love or any type of celebrity because they represent some part of you that you're like, mm. I believe that too. And that's just yeah. like an existential version of me and what I believe and what I represent. You know, so if you show your weirder sides then people are like, I have that weird side too. So I love her. And it makes people just attach to you more, you know? Like today I was boxing naked. Should have posted that. <laughs> Were you really boxing naked? Yeah, I was naked? boxing naked. I got home from, I went boxing this morning, uh -huh. and I was all fired up because this instructor who I look up to so much, her name is Sarah, she's such a badass, and I haven't seen her there for a while, but it's kind of far away, and sometimes I get on like these kicks of going, and then I'll take a few months off, but I haven't seen her there for a while, Yeah. and she came up to me after, and she was like, you used to be blonde, and I was like, yeah, and she's like, you used to always be on that side of the room. I was like, this is the first time I've ever gone on this side of the room, and she was like, way to challenge yourself and she's like i can tell you you're improving and i was like all fired up yeah and so i came home and i was changing out of my sweaty stuff and i looked in the mirror i was like yeah you got better and then i just start boxing in the mirror and then i realized how ridiculous that was that i was naked <laughs> naked boxing boxing i mean if i posted that i'd it would be amazing you just blur it out and you just see your body <laughs> like who, she, who are you fighting <laughs> my old self uh -uh. <laughs> Two hours ago, Caitlin. That would You're be better great. than that. Damn. Okay. So now I know. Yeah. Because my brain is. Jason will say it all the time to me. He's like, "You're." I would love to get into your brain for a little while. It's just wild. Yes. So, and even if you film, if like if you have the balls to film those parts of yourself, because you'd have to reenact them a bit. Yeah. You know. That's but true. you could just look. I bet no one's not going to watch that. You know what? For this YouTube video, I am going to cut to me. Naked boxing yes. with black boxes over my boobs and vagina. Yes. Done. I love it. Can't wait. I love it. And you don't even need the wine. No, I don't. No. no. <laughs> I, just, I just need to go boxing. I get amped up. I know. I think it'd be inspiring, too. It's like, man. Caitlin can naked box. <laughs> so I can, can I. naked box. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. Thank you. I mean, you, you might have just made me go viral right now. Go Hey, we can partner on that. Let's do. blow it up. That's yeah. what you do. You literally own a, a company. There's three companies, but three yeah. Three companies. <sighs> Explain. Viralish? Viralish. So for a long time, we were just making these videos and then yeah. just teaching friends and family how to do it. And then we were covertly behind all of these Karen's on an airplane, crazy things that happen at Target. Yeah. And it, it was just so funny to yeah. us being like, oh my God, people have no idea that this is staged, yeah. you know? But we're just taking things that people like to have opinions on. And whether yeah. they're, um, it's everything from cooking to couple stuff to prank stuff to some stuff is staged or Karen's right. just uh, our social experiments so people can have opinions on them just to point out sort of the oh, state of the world. Interesting. Like if eggs are, uh, everyone's fighting about the price of eggs and how expensive they are. You can bet we're using eggs in a video. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, that's opening true. shot, just smashing a carton of eggs <laughs> and then finding a weird way to cook them or something just unconventional. <laughs> 
on the hood of a car in the heat. That's so um, funny. But yeah, so then once we we realized there is a, it took several years to sort of start to formalize it. But then we started managing people that we were just training how to do it. Um, just because we watched it change our lives like yeah. so drastically. And then our friends were getting laid off during COVID because almost all of them were in the music industry. Right. And we're like, right. you guys just make a couple of these. Like, yeah. just be in it. It's so weird, but just try it. And then they were like, this is so much fun. You get it's paid so for fun. this? Yeah. So fun. Great. And so then they started seeing, you know, the revenue that can come from having that many Where eyeballs on their content Where does the revenue too. come from? Like advertisers? Or, I don't understand. Yeah. Same way people are getting paid on YouTube. It's just ads, yeah, but we do it mostly, we'll do YouTube also, but yeah. mostly from Facebook, Snapchat. Those are our biggest partners. Oh, uh, okay, because I was thinking I am I never see ads run through your Instagram yes. or anything. It, so everything but Instagram. More Facebook, YouTube, that no. makes sense. And now TikTok paying for one minute or longer videos has been awesome. Oh, good. And actually paying better than, than Facebook, so if we can what? keep that up. I know. Oh, good. I was going to ask you what you think about TikTok because um, I feel like your videos probably do so well on TikTok, but then there's this whole rumor that TikTok was going to go away and then it's not and not and now it is in one state. I don't know. Yeah. And then they didn't pay anything. And yeah. so they kind of changed the landscape a little bit because they were like, we don't have to pay anything. Facebook and Snapchat were paying fantastic right. and YouTube was paying good for long form. People just aren't used to seeing what we do get views because you're more used to watching people on YouTube and people understand that YouTube get paid yeah people oh, understand true. that like random viral videos how that makes money but it's right. just ad impressions you know same thing okay i don't mean to brag but i made this roasted eggplant dish for dinner the other night <laughs> and i was really impressed with myself gave myself a little pat on the back i can't take all the credit because someone taught me how to do it and that was gordon ramsay ever heard of him yeah i don't know him personally i'll admit it but i have masterclass so with masterclass you can learn from the best to become your best anytime anywhere at your own pace their annual membership starts at just ten dollars a month and you get unlimited access to every instructor thousands of online lessons exclusive content insights and so much more there are over 180 classes to pick from everything from relational intelligence with the one and only Esther Perel to comedy with Steve Martin to cooking with Gordon Ramsay and you can gain these skills in as little as 10 minutes whether it's on your phone usually which is what I do computer tablet smart TV and even audio modes so if you just want to listen on the go how much would it cost to take a one-on-one -on -one class from the world's best well with masterclass annual membership it only costs you ten dollars a month get unlimited access to every class and right now as an off the vine listener you can get 15% off when you go to masterclass.com slash vine that's master Masterclass.com slash Vine for 15% off an annual membership. Masterclass.com slash Vine. Think so of it as I, our job is like to keep people on the app for longer periods of time. Yeah. So everything yeah. that we do, we design for watch time to keep people on. And then Facebook rewards our profiles with higher reach. And so if we can just keep people hooked and the way you keep people hooked is by pressing on their sensibility sometimes. So we'll just before we even craft a video, we'll think of what emotion do we want to evoke? Do we want them to think they're going to learn something yeah. like a DIY or a cooking video? Do we want to just make them laugh or do we want to anger them? Anger is a really powerful emotion. Oh, yeah. You know, play a lot books. of angry people out there, There's, too. Especially on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they are the loudest. Oh, my gosh. I truly, Facebook scares me. But that's so interesting because now that I'm thinking about it, I just watched and I was hooked into your video of which soccer ball was going to be kicked and wax the guy's chest. Oh, yeah. I was like but, waiting for it. I was like, what ball is he going to yeah. kick? When is he going to wax his chest? It was like a wax strip attached mm -hmm. to a ball and you were kicking them. But yeah. you're so good at like holding the entertainment of it too. Oh, thanks. And so, I, you're right. I didn't, I was not leaving until I found out which ball was going to rip off that man's chest hair. Yes. And so on Facebook, like we'll cut it down for the other platforms, but on Facebook, it's that's an eight minute long video <laughs> and you're thinking you don't swipe away like the entire job is also just holding that. Like you're right. just trying to prevent that. So yeah. putting them in a trance where they think the thing is going to happen at yeah. any moment. And then it lasts at least, you know, three, four minutes. I also like that you don't gatekeep. Like yeah. I feel like, did you ever live in LA? No. Okay. I feel like people in LA like gatekeep and they don't want other people to have the success that they have and they want to mm -hmm. be at the top. And it's like this dog eat dog world out there. Yeah. And in Nashville, I find more people are like, let's collab or let's do something together where you're like not gatekeeping secrets on how to go viral and what you do and how to keep people in yeah. because there's room for everybody in the internet. Yeah. The world is a very and, big place. Yeah. And it's changing so fast, you know, it's, it's where so fast. gatekeeping bothers me. And how, what do you think the biggest difference between 
not just LA and like Nashville is necessarily, but the types of people who want to gatekeeper. Where does that come from? Because you don't really have that in you either. No, I don't. Well, I'm, I'm Canadian, so I feel like that's <laughs> my excuse. <laughs> I'm always like, if anything like good comes from me, I'm like, I'm Canadian. Uh, I don't know. I don't know where it comes from. It, I think it's just like a lot of insecure people who have to like fight their way to the top to get these roles that there's like 0.01% room for. You're right. I think that's the difference because like even in music, it's more of that way where there's only so many seats at the table. Yeah. But with content creation, there's endless amounts of seats. And yeah. I think the people that I've seen that gatekeep the least came from like the bottom and they huh. actively remember what that felt like. At least that's a motivator for me is remembering that's always true. wanting a seat at the table, whether it's in music or then it's content creation. And then when it hit for us, I'm like, I want everybody to feel this. I want to be a river not a reservoir. It's yeah. like money or anything else. The more you give yeah. it away, the more it just comes to you. I totally agree with that mentality because I've caught myself sometimes wanting to be like, well, this is, mm. I want it. It's my thing. Yeah. And then I always remember how good it feels to then like open the door for somebody else, help them and ha how it yeah. doesn't affect you at all, except in a positive way. Yeah. Especially in the internet space. Like there, there really is room for everybody. Podcasting, yes. YouTubing. I think it's changed more and more and more. I think it is flipped. And I think social media helped it flip because where you did just have the single guy behind a desk or three or four people that you had to impress. Now it's flipped where the market gets to decide and the leverage is actually with the creator because you can go direct to consumer now. You're not going through radio or yep. just the movies or just on television. You can actively entertain. And if you are good enough, you will break through. And that's who they want now, that's you know, because so it's saving them millions of dollars in scouting and training and sources. It's true. You know? I wonder where it's going to be in like 10 years. I think yeah, would tell I, I think, think influencers and micro influencers are the new like celebrities. I think more and more mm -hmm. it's going to move away from just being gatekeeping. You're always going to have like television and movie stars and yeah. the people that have hits on radio, but more and more you're seeing that dissipate to where you don't just have 20 to 50 ultra famous people anymore. You have hundreds of kind of micro famous people. Oh, that's so true. Oh know? my gosh, like Walker Hayes for example, like musician. Mm -hmm successful musician yeah. but his viral videos yes crush and he just keeps going and going and every day him and his family do something crazy and they're crushing it yeah then it just exposes more than just one facet of yourself of yourself yeah. more than just i can sing you're gonna right. see this person is awesome yeah and i it's like the taylor swift effect or the caitlin bristow effect where they just thank you for putting me in the same category you're so welcome <laughs> they formally just saw maybe one side of you but through socials they can be like God, I love her and I will follow her no matter what she does. Like people are going to follow Taylor from country to yeah, pop yeah. to selling. If she could sell a towel if she wants to or oh, a, a, a rug, like anything because they love her, yeah. not just the single she put out. People buy her rainwater if it rained on her concert that day. Do they really? That's they real? sell the rainwater. It's wild. That's not even surprising. That's it's amazing what you can sell now online yeah. too. <laughs> Toes, feet, Toe. Yes, oh, feet. I think that one is still the most surprising to me. And Blake, my husband, thinks it's because you, it's something that people don't see a lot. You know, they're mostly oh. covered up, kind of like a boob, like a but it's a more accessible boob. It's a you know a foot is a more accessible it's a boob. boob. Mm -hmm. I think so. We got it. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> Publish it. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna make that a T-shirt. Mm -hmm. I'd, buy it. I'd buy it that is so interesting <laughs> though um i just love your pranks i love i am like a fellow prankster i i can't creatively come up with pranks that like you guys do all the time please call me i will help yeah, you come up with some to, good yeah, pranks i should have just hired you as my prank puller we should just come giver. up with some to do to jason oh we'll yes. just leave some around the house we'll booby trap it yeah he gets because home. i my last April Fool's joke I pulled on him was everything. And people were like, well, how are you going to top that? And I'm like, I have no idea. I think I peaked. So maybe I'll just uh, count on you. I saw somewhere that there's um, bathing suit shorts for men that dissolve in the water. Oh, yes. We have a drawer full of them at the house. Ah! <laughs> Because it works every time. Ah. Dissolving bathing suit prank and people are always at the house and always we're always like, oh, just get in the pool. And then we're like, here, I got some shorts for you. Roll the camera. <laughs> That's, That's good. incredible. That is, I just love a shenanigan. Yes. And you, know? you got to up the stakes though. So you got to do it like a, at a family reunion. Oh, Or something shit. like that. My family would, that would, 
that would land with my family. Got and Good. like, which is not as funny. It's like almost funnier if you do it with a family that like isn't pissed. chill about it. <laughs> <laughs> what is the craziest prank you've ever pulled? Oh man, I should have been prepared for this one. <laughs> uh, well, yesterday we story. waxed a guy's mustache off with his own truck. Oh, ow. Oh, Did yeah. it, what if it ripped his whole face off? It could have. So we, uh, <laughs> the for the video, really we take. started doing that because people, that's the immediate reaction is like, you're going to watch that because that is high stakes. That is someone's face. Yeah, and actually, yeah. men, you can't wax men's beards because the hairs intertwine underneath the skin. So it'll like scar you like oh. really, really bad. So we so do we that <laughs> and then we do a switch yeah, to where yeah, we yeah. don't okay. actually do that. And okay. then we do like a whip pan real quick and then cut. Then he shaves it off and it looks really scraggly. We put the hairs on the wax strip see i also love that you don't keep secrets on that you're like because i would have been i would have been like no that really happened but you're like no. we did for a long time because it does ruin it for people my mom still commits to everything is real so my brother last week got in videos just got three people pregnant and he got evicted and i was homeless and my my mom still sells it she's like yeah he's just down on his luck and really his life's falling apart so god forbid he ever really get engaged there was a video that went mega viral last week of him proposing and having audio of someone's father who had passed away and it ended up front page reddit cbs inside edition all this stuff and my mom's all her friends are like that's not his girlfriend and my mom it is committed now. to it yes <laughs> That's like that TikTok video when they're like, Mom, I got pulled over and I like did this and I told him that you yeah. were, had fallen down the stairs and that you're really injured and he's following me to the house to make sure. And the mom's like, what? And then they like walk yeah. in and the mom's like on the <laughs> ground like committing to the bit. I love it. I should have done that with my mom. She's the, She would commit the most. Oh, I believe. That's what I was just thinking. I'm like, you mm -hmm. should 100% do that with your mom. I she wish. would like actually break her leg for she your would. sake. <laughs> she would. Oh, yeah. that's incredible. But yeah, we used to keep it secret and now we're just, we're recruiting. We're trying to teach more and more people. Everybody wants to be, yeah. but I feel like between age 15 to 34 with a phone in their hand, I was like, I want to be an influencer because it's the best job a creator, yeah. I should say. But people just think they've got to build an audience for two years with a niche and it's just a hard way to go and then eventually sell them something. Right. And a lot, not a lot of people know that you can make viral videos as a job and I can't think of a single other industry where a single take video can make anywhere between one and a hundred thousand dollars without That's ever crazy. building an audience. That's you don't crazy. have to have now, a bunch of followers. And then how do you feel about the other side where people want this influencer life and they want this like overnight fame and success, but for a lot of people, people are really sensitive to backlash and comments and mm -hmm. judgmental people, which are all of them out there. So what is your take on that? Are you just like, eh, it's a business or does it affect you ever? I, it, it sure did uh, for a long time. I think everybody has to, will go, that has a heart or soul or like has yeah. feelings. Yeah. Like it's going to hurt in the yeah. very beginning. Yeah. And then now I feel like we're playing the adult version of like when we were kids and they were like, would you eat this cockroach for $25? Yeah. But like now it's at a bigger scale. Right. You know, of, I think anybody would do a lot of, they would stage the content that we stage if they knew what it actually did. And it's not just for views or likes, you know? I always think about this for myself too. I'll never forget, I probably told this story on the podcast, so forgive me if I'm repeating myself, but I'll never forget when it first became a thing that you could make money on Instagram and yeah. you could like do an ad. And I did an ad for something that I like and uh, a girl was like, you're such a sellout, like get a real job. And it was this yeah. whole thing at the beginning where now people don't say that anymore because mm -hmm. they know it is a real job. She was literally holding a Bud Light in her photo. And I was like, what if Bud Light paid you 10 grand just to have that same photo you already have up there? Mm -hmm. Would you do it? And she was like, oh, I never thought about it that way. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, it really is. Like, why Why would you not do it? And and the people that are just angry feels like the people that would want to do it anyways and what if they had the choice? I think so too. I yeah. think like our age and younger, it's more and more accessible and more people would really lean into that. And that's why I think I'm so vocal about it now. Well, yeah. when we built a company around it, right. teaching people how to do it, but because right. it is life-changing and you don't actually have to go the in, the traditional influencer route and build an audience. You can start day one and we can just teach people how to craft that. Whether you're a thrifter or a DIYer or a cook, like there's just a certain way of, it's psychology is really what we're yeah. teaching at the end of the day. That is, mm -hmm. I, do, you, do you hold like courses? 
Yeah, we're coming out with one. Yeah, Can I just to it? say, yeah, girl, I'll give it to you. Okay, it's we're building the list now because I'm still filming all of it. It's hard to distill all of it down into here's what right. it is because even we're teaching how to film it. I'm gonna film a Karen video differently than a cooking video, right. differently than a DIY video. So it's like, all right, how do we put this in a course? But um, we're doing that and we're giving a lot of it away for free because that's what I love to do. So where is it? Like, if people follow you on all these platforms, they'll. F- They'll mm-hmm. you'll talk about it. And yeah. We'll see or it. viralish.com forward slash create. They okay. can get on the list and then I'll email or text them first when it's ready. That's and then so I'll run cool. a lot of it by them and be like, is this valuable or do I just think this is valuable? You know, we're doing a lot of that right now, just iterating on what I think this is so helpful because it was so helpful for me to learn. Yeah. Somebody else may not learn like that. Right. And then we're trying to get more people out to the house to just work with them one on one. Do you guys do videos every day? Every day. Like right now, I just left the house. There's probably 10 people there filming. And you guys do some crazy DIY. Blake is a handy man. Yes. My gosh. Blake is my husband. And he we just he found a niche anything. with him. So we put out a challenge for him because he does not like making videos. He, he uh, He's an engineer. He was building hospitals when we met and had no social media. Whoa. And I was like weekly vlogging at the time yeah. for like three people. <laughs> I didn't care to watch. I just loved making videos. And I was just learning. And he was like, I never want to be in any of that. And that's funny. Come 2020, we were averaging about 20 million views a week on wow. just me kind of doing it by myself. And I'd wait for him to get home from work and be like, okay, I prepped one. We just hold the camera yeah. and say this. Yeah. And he would have a little note card and his voice would shake. <laughs> and he's off camera. And so yeah. I know when we started making him be in videos, because I'm like, listen, I I can't always dance for the dinner. Or what if something happened to me? Right. What if I got sick? Right. You know, then your whole livelihood kind of goes away. Oh I was like, you can do this. You get it. Does and he like it now? Yeah. Because oh, he good. just looks at it differently than I do. I love the creativeness of it. And he's like, I'm an engineer. So there's a template to me. Yeah. Uh, I just see it. It's very black and white. And you could just, once you understand the template, you can apply it really to any niche. Which so, makes for a really good team. Yes. It's so helpful. And How is it working with your husband every day? Do you guys just get along so well? We or do get it, along really yeah. well. I think we're very lucky. That takes a special team. I think you have to have opposite skill sets. You have to have the like yeah. the values have to be the same. What you want to do, the way you approach, like how you want to do life together, I think is yeah. the same. But then yeah. within that, you're, you're opposite. So if he's saying, if he's got a strong opinion about something, I respect him enough because I'm like, he's talking about something that is not my skill set. So we just have to trust each other right. in what we're doing. I'll say we set out a challenge for him. Um, this is the power, I think, of the formula and just making viral videos and how approachable this is if yeah. you learn how to do it. We said, all right, Blake, you're going to start a TikTok. And this is just a few months ago, maybe six or seven months ago. We said, how, qu- how quick do you think we can grow you to a million followers? And here's your rules. You have to only use the formula that we've kind of developed yeah. and that we're teaching. You're gonna pick a small niche like DIY, yeah. redneck DIY, yeah. and you can't speak in any of the videos. And it took him 29 videos. Shut up. 29 videos. Million. The I'm first, over here just grinding yeah. away, <laughs> fucking trying to do d- dance moves and like. <laughs> well, that's working for you, what? so I don't know that I would stop I, that. I'm not at a million. Well, you know what? Grow a mustache and we'll wax it off with, with your car. Um, I can grow a mustache. <laughs> I'm on medication for that, okay? So. <laughs> Aren't we all? Hey, there's a quicker, more redneck way Dang. that pays well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Here I am paying for spiral actone. Dude, this medication. is the prank that I would pr- uh, play on you is make you think we're actually going to like wax your facial hair and the whole time just to get you actually genuinely so nervous and sweating and freaking out. And we just hold that moment of tension with you for a, a long enough. And then we just prank you at the end where it wasn't actually going to do that anyways. But oh, just watching you God. freak the whole so time. I so scared to hang out with you guys every day because I'd be like, my head on a swivel. Like, what are they going to do to me? This week's Off the Vine is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Most of you listening right now are probably multitasking. While you're listening to me talk, you're probably driving or cleaning, maybe you're exercising or even grocery shopping. But if you're not in some kind of moving vehicle, there's something else you can be doing right now, and that's getting an auto quote from Progressive Insurance. It's super easy, and you can save money by doing it right from your own phone. Drivers who save by switching to Progressive save nearly $700 on average, and auto customers qualify for an average of seven discounts. So there's discounts for having multiple 
multiple vehicles on your policy, being a homeowner, and more. So just like your favorite podcast, Progressive will be with you 24-7, 365 days a year, so you're protected no matter what. Multitask right now and quote your car insurance at Progressive.com and join the over 29 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates, national average 12-month savings of $698 by new customers surveyed who saved with Progressive between June 2021 and May 2022. Potential savings will vary and discounts not available in all states and situations. But we have to talk about the time that I came to your house and we hosted the Daniel Diamond yes. um, David's Bridal Party. Is that where we met? No! We knew each other before then. Yes. On the thing, the women's well, panel. And, and we saw each other at Sean Johnson and Andrew's little get together. Oh, yes, yes. Yes. But that was so funny because, again, I was like, I don't know if like, that's going to do well. Is, are people going to think that's funny? So the thing was, for people who don't know, because so many people still are asking me, was that pool thing real? Oh, really? And it's funny because it was and it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> That was the great, that's the great part of it. So I wasn't going to say that unless you were. <laughs> the funniest part is that we are like, well, you're, you we're hosting it at the viral-ish house mm -hmm. and things that were supposed to go viral. And so we're like, we'll bring Daniel a cake and mm -hmm. like celebrate. Um, and then he'll trip and go in the pool. But mm -hmm. I was like, I don't want to go in the pool because I'm a weirdo who likes to keep my makeup and hair on from the night before if I have something well, the next day. You had to go day. somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, so I had gotten my hair professionally done, my makeup professionally done, and I was like a fresh spray tan. Mm -hmm. And I go, I'm not going to go fall in the pool because I'm going to keep this for tomorrow. Well, he and he was in on that. Uh -huh. And then he grabs me like because he panicked when I tripped. <laughs> and then he, just he yeah, he just grabbed me and we both fall in. And he felt so bad. But I was like. This is hilarious. It was because so I really funny. didn't mean to fall in the pool. No. So it was perfect. Our job and what we were hired to do was get David's bridal at least 40 million organic impressions. And ah. I said, I think or not. That wasn't the number. But I was like, I think we can do this if Caitlin goes in the pool because we're thinking about headlines. And right. I'm already writing for Caitlin Brissett falls in the pool right. at a David's bridal event in right. Nashville. <laughs> and so then I'm like, all right, that has to happen. And then I know I can hit that deliverable. Yeah. And so then when you're like, I don't want to go in the pool, I'm like. Okay, we can still do that. That was nice we of you. Still, we, you were like, okay. We can do that. Everything's down the drain. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> My job's tanking. <laughs> they like cancel the party. Like, we're not going to go. Yeah. yeah. That, so it still happened. So yeah, it's, it still happened. Just because Daniel's like, I'm not going in alone. That was, <laughs> yeah. I, he like panicked when he fell backwards <sighs> and just like, what did you say instinctually? Is that the word, right? I think like, so. Because we all, grab? he knew to not grab you. That was and hilarious. He'd have it, 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 But your ankle really rolled as I was watching it back. Oh, I I'm like, to the bit. you did. Yeah. You that's, did. I really was like, I'm going to make this ankle roll. So good. So believable. So hard. That yeah. was my, my friend's little boy the other day was, he's hilarious. And he really wanted to commit to the bit that he was under like a, what is that called? Like a armoire? Yeah. Like, like the dresser. end of a couch? Oh, yeah. You know, like a. Ottoman, Ottoman. <laughs> oh, like this, but yeah, different. Yeah, but bigger. Yeah. And he wanted us to believe that he w the that Ottoman was moving without him under there. The kid comes out, his back's bleeding. It's like all scratched oh, everywhere. Wow. And he was like, oh, and we were like, wow, you really commit. Like, so is he available for hire? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, was, people who commit to the bit are yeah. in it. My brother is one of those people. His first video led to third degree burns. His no. second video, bloody eye, um, and then he knew we can't show blood on camera. Like it, it'll demonetize the really? video. So it's thirty seconds. I'm saying it's thirty seconds till the end. Like I need you to milk it for thirty seconds. And I see he's bleeding, so he just rolled over, hit it, and then the last thirty seconds are us trying to roll him over. And then as soon as I yelled cut, he rolled over. He's already black and blue, swollen, no blood everywhere. Way. Oh yes. And his third video, he got like pushed down. I mean, scraped up his whole body. I'm like, this kid is, he's Your still sticking is with it. in it to win it. <laughs> yeah. That's oh. incredible. He commits like none other though. He's doing public stuff out at Target today. What are you doing? Tease it. <laughs> I don't know everything that they're filming. So we just have certain numbers that we have to hit for certain shows. Yeah. And so then after that, I don't really tell him what they're doing, but I think he's doing something it's some type of scare prank. Yeah. Like he got in the Love deep it. freezer last week. So I think he's getting in the deep freezer and then putting on like some creepy mask and someone's not going to look until a certain amount of time.
I love it. Something I just silly love stuff. pranks. I love them so much, and people love too. to watch them, and it's just so funny. What are like hard things that people stop listening, like either or scroll past, like if they see mm. blood, is it swearing? Like, what are other things that people are like? That's not messes. good. Messes. So with cooking videos, right? You've seen the crazy cooking videos on TikTok, people combining things they shouldn't be combining. Yes. Um, and then so we'll have people like do subtle gross things like uh, lick their fingers and then put it back in the food or play with their hair. Um, and then or, it goes in the food. play with their feet like me. Uh, and, yeah, just yeah. those little engagement tactic things that are just like, Ah, they're continuing to hook people and people are going to have opinions about them. Mm. But if you go too gross to where it's just unbelievable or just yeah, kind of hard like, to watch, no. people are gone. So we've had to play with that line over the years mm. to be like, okay, here's what it is for this person. Now, this person that is a chef may have a totally different line because people like their vibe different. It like, really is a whole psychology thing. Yes. What did you take in school? PR marketing, strategic communication which I never thought I was going to use. I thought I was wow. going to go work in a cubicle for a nonprofit. Um, that was my goal when The Voice happened. I was going to go really? work for a nonprofit that helped people struggling with depression, addiction, self-injury, oh. suicide. And You I, probably do help people without even realizing it by making them laugh. Man, that when we first started during quarantine, I would just I would cry happy tears yeah. a lot because I was like, this is we are just entertaining people. Whether totally. you love it or hate it, you're always going to get the hate. But yeah. we people we just we just make them laugh yeah. when we were just heavy heavy in pranks at the time and it was making our wow. life better too because when you have to make videos and create content as a job as you know your life just naturally becomes more interesting yeah because you're staying yeah. you have more and more memories and your brain's just always going about what you could possibly do next and yes. that's where the internet is kind of cool too where i get so inspired some people yeah. get miserable after scrolling tiktok for hours i like feel inspired i'm like i gotta be more creative i gotta get funnier i That's gotta do more things like <laughs> that means you have a good feed yeah i do my feed mm -hmm. is incredible I'm, i wouldn't change it for a thing as yeah. soon as someone tries to send me a video of like something political i'm like i'm not even opening it not even opening it not mess messing with the the good algorithm i've already got going on here do you work a lot on controlling your inputs like i think we're so blessed when we grew up where it was like kind of this path, like we went to high school and then you could go to college and then you had to yeah. pick a job. And there it was, we were more limited to our exposures at the time. But with social media, with podcasts, yeah. you have mentors from afar now and yeah. you can control your input. So if I have a bad circle or a bad family, a bad friend group, and I don't have a lot of opportunities, like you could just listen to mentors from afar and expand so your true. vision of what's available to you. That's so true. Past your circumstances. See, that's what I always give credit to my family and the friends that I surrounded myself with because they always were like, Caitlin, you, whatever you do, you'll be successful at because it's you. Mm -hmm. Like they were always very encouraging like that. Mm -hmm. And my the friend group that I had for my 11 years in Vancouver, they were all like these like female entrepreneurs who had big personalities. And then my family being so supportive of like not doing the blueprint of going, yeah. doing this, do this, do this, like just go and you'll do whatever you want to do. Yeah. And I think that's huge. That is huge. And I feel I had a similar upbringing and I'm so thankful for that. Yeah. And so my biggest encouragement to people who don't have that family, because we got so lucky. We were very right. privileged to yes. have yes. vision to see past our circumstances. Because I saw people doing bigger things that were outside of Stillwater, Oklahoma. Right. You know, right. and because and it was encouraged outside of your just nature, maybe. But did you have how do you encourage other people with your platform, I guess, to give them the confidence that that's available to them too? Or is it mostly just by being yourself? Yeah, I think I try to do that. Like when I went on Bachelor, I was always like, I want people to that know me at home to watch mm -hmm. and go, oh my God, that's exactly who she is. And yeah. then inspire other people to just like live as truthful as they can if they're shy or weird or outgoing mm -hmm. or loud or quiet, like just be exactly who you are. And that like aligns you with where you're supposed to go it just does i think somebody said this to me recently because everyone was talking about you know law of attraction it seems like yeah. more and more over the last several years they said it's actually like law of resonance um like if you just you are authentically aligned with yourself and you're yeah. not trying to be somebody that you're not it yes. is you resonate yes. you know you're like a light and then that naturally attracts what you want so it's yes. more than just sitting here thinking i want this i want this i want this yes. i have to become it first and then you resonate and, and then it to. naturally happens for you i see so many people out there you know that come off reality shows that want to be the relatable one or the funny one or mm -hmm. the smart and they try to get into that box of what they think they should be yeah. and it never works yeah where it's like just be like joe grocery store joe who is on one episode of the bachelor was just 
so himself. He was kind of awkward. He was shy, but he was good looking, but he didn't know he was good looking. And Mm -hmm. he literally got sent home night one and people were like, no, we're not done with him. And they like ever, he got like the most followers out of it. He went on Dancing with the Stars. He now is like the main podcast for ABC. Like, and it was just because you could tell that guy was everything just to his core of who he was and embraced it. And Mm -hmm. that just goes to show. Yeah. He was just himself. Yeah. And I think some people, it's hard to even take away all everything that's been put upon you and be like, who am I? I feel like I, I'm talking to more people, having more conversations like this, of people being like, I'm not sure exactly yeah. who I am. I feel like I'm a sum of all the, these different inputs that uh, some of I don't want. Yeah. You know? Well, and how do you not let numbers affect that? Because numbers mm-hmm. mean money and business and growth and opportunity. And you see those numbers and it's you know, obviously making you feel like you're doing something right. How do you not let that affect you mentally when the numbers go down or when Mm -hmm. your your followers go down? And, you know, obviously with everybody coming up into this space, wanting to be an influencer, oh, you get this many likes on your face or you don't. I think it's hard because the market that we were talking about gatekeepers earlier and how it's like flipped. And I think in some senses, the market does tell you if you're good enough not if you're good enough but if the way that you're entertaining or showing up Mm -hmm. is good enough Mm -hmm. so if you know like i genuinely think i'm the luckiest person in the world and i i I thought that that. even when i was bankrupt but i had this self-identity that that it is gonna happen for me if i just keep being myself and keep entertaining i just knew in my gut that i'm gonna get there and i didn't know how or when but i believed it so i didn't know if it was gonna happen in six months or six years yeah but it made every setback or every, that picture didn't work, that video didn't work. I knew it was gonna be there. I knew it was gonna happen eventually. So then it makes the, yeah, so I just wanted to it. fail faster, yeah, you know? Fail faster. Yeah, oh, to get I there. I love it. <laughs> I love that because that's, the, I mean, first of all, I always say a woman's intuition is just bonkers. Like the what we can feel in our guts is mm-hmm. insane. And if you really, like I read so many books on that kind of thing too and, and believe it that yeah. I I do the same thing where I'm like well I just know this will happen for me and this is just a moment of like oh okay yeah I can't mm-hmm. can't keep going up I gotta go down and then go up and then go down and then go up and I don't mean that in just like numbers and Instagram followers I mean that in like emotions and life like and life and yeah. everything I hope generations coming up can have that kind of mentality too where um, even if it's not a viral video where if it's school or relationships mm-hmm. or life like jobs yeah going up and down for example like you said you were bankrupt and you just knew in your gut you would figure it out yeah i was thinking the whole time i was like this is gonna make a good testimony someday someday i'm gonna sit on a podcast and i'm gonna be able to tell this (laughs) this story yeah so cool you know what one of my favorite most defining moments is i think this is what gave that to me because how do you like that's easy for me to say now it's like oh i always knew that i was gonna be able to entertain a lot of people you know and be silly for a living but um, it was during The Voice. So I auditioned for The Voice as a dare. And that's how I moved to Nashville and got into this world. And it was just a vessel. It was a dare for you to go on The Voice. I never sang on a real stage before in my life. I did not belong there. I showed you up. sure did. And I chugged, drove from Oklahoma to Nashville, chugged energy drinks through the night for an 8 a.m. audition. Like, had this I don't give a shit energy, yeah, yeah. you know? And that also kind of yeah. translates because everybody else there was shaking in yeah. their boots. Like, I want this so bad. I've right. been meant to do this since I was two and I've always known it. And oh, I was like, oh, bless you. Like, <laughs> this was a dare. <laughs> uh, I was the cheerleading sorority girl who didn't know she could sing, yeah. I guess. And so that. Um, got me in there and so then I moved to Nashville signed a bullshit record deal pardon yeah. my language but it was crap And but I was laying you know when you're going to be on a show and you know your life's changed but it hasn't aired yet Yes. so it was in that interim and I'm laying on the abs mat at the gym and I'm praying and I was like God I wanted to go work in PR for this nonprofit. I wanted to go speak and encourage and inspire people and brighten their day. And it was like this wave came over me as audible as you could ever think you're hearing God's voice or knowing something so deep in your intuition. And he said, Ad, I just gave you a stage and a microphone (gasps) and a voice you didn't know you had. Whoa. What do you think you're supposed to do with it? Go speak, go encourage, go inspire people. I just gave you a way bigger platform than you were going to give yourself. And I, it still brings tears to my wow. eyes. So I was like, okay, I will earn everything else. Thank you for this. Thank you for this privilege. Thank you for this opportunity. I'll earn the rest. And I now I'm like, okay, are we entertaining people there? Are we making them smile? Are we oh God, expanding the table for creators? You know, that is cool. It, I, it's my North Star. 
Yeah. Do you have a North Star like that? Not necessarily a moment, but like people define success. Like in music, people like were always saying like, oh, and when I stand on the stage and I accept a Grammy in front of all of my peers, right. that's success to me. And I thought that was a dangerous way. That's a very dangerous way to live. Yeah, that is a very dangerous way to live. Yeah, no, I like. I remember thinking before I even went on Dancing with the Stars, I was like, I can't let that win define success because I had talked to Hannah Brown, and mm -hmm. she was going through such a dark time, and she thought if I just win that trophy, mm -hmm. then I'll feel like a winner and it will be success. And she was like, and then I felt just as low the next day after winning it. And I remember thinking yeah. those times, but I think for me it was. Um, I'll never forget a girl coming up to me. I got hated on so bad on The Bachelorette for, for, from a lot of people that I wouldn't want to be friends with anyways. <laughs> but That's right. It was when I was like, oh my God, the world really hates me. And one girl came up to me at the airport and she started crying and she was like, no one has ever made me feel more seen than you and you don't even know who I am. And she was like, I I want to wear less makeup and embrace my, even though I'm like, Botox, makeup, like, <laughs> but I did like the, this like real Instagram post where I was like, by the way, like that's, that's fake, this is real. Yeah. And that to me felt like I was doing something right and something like I was like, okay, hey, that's why I wanted to go on TV in the first place. Mm -hmm. Shocker, it was not to find love on The Bachelor. It was because I wanted to have a voice. I wanted to have a platform. I wanted to entertain Yeah, all those things. And that was when I was like, oh, it's even bigger than what I thought it could yes. be. Because you were bigger than just Caitlin Bristow in that single moment. Right. And then the world gets to see that. And then the world wants more of that. Yeah. And do you still, what part of your, do you still feel like there's so much more that you're going to accomplish? Does your yes. intuition say... Man, yes. this is going to be even bigger than I even think it is today. I was telling my producer earlier, this was um, after I boxed naked in the mirror, I gave myself a pep talk, as I do once in a while. Mm -hmm. And I was like... Like verbally? Yeah. Out loud, not oh, even out, in your head. Oh, no, it has to be out loud. Your okay. words have energy. Okay. And I, I looked in the mirror and I said, I love your face. I love your body. I love your heart. I love your personality. And... You are going to be the person that shows the world that age doesn't matter and you will forever be successful and doing what you love to do and being who you are. And and I like had this and I like got emotional with myself. And then I just <sighs> sometimes I give myself mere high fives. And then I was like, oh, and then girl. I felt so good after I was like, Whew, I meant that. <sighs> yes. But there's so many things that people can pick me apart for for imperfections. And I'm like, no, I want to shine a light on the imperfections and the rock bottoms and the mm -hmm. lows and the and I want to shine a light on the highs and the successes and the accomplishments and all those things. And I think that's what I was put on this planet to do is be a light of everything. I don't so if you're pissed off at me, good. Mm. That means I'm sharing things that you might not want to see and that you probably have experienced too and you're just mad at me about it. Amen. Oh, how long did it take you to get to that perspective? Uh, 37 years. <laughs> <laughs> Approximately. So true, though. And I'm so glad you do that in the mirror. I'm going to take note of that because I, do, I do it kind of in my head and then I get scared and I like stop doing it, even though I, that's so resonant. Fake it. Even if you don't mean it, say it out loud. The, your body and subconscious doesn't know the difference mm. between a joke, sarcasm, or realness. Yeah. Say it out loud and mean it. Okay, I'm going to get better at that. Naked. I will, I will do it. I'll work up to that. Oh. <laughs> um, how do you protect your mental health when you have off days because everyone does or when mm -hmm. you're like me and PMDD kicks my ass and I get so depressed? Mm -hmm. But how do you protect your mental health? Oh, I, similar to how you like fake what you'd say, what yeah. you know is true. You're just not feeling in that moment. I fake smile a lot. Yeah. I'll just sit there like a goofball and just be like, <laughs> everything is awesome. <laughs> and then eventually, and then I'll tell myself that, a couple dad jokes. Yeah. I'm not kidding. Yeah. But I'll just tell myself dad jokes because I think they're so funny. So it's just laughter. Yeah, and it's the laughter. best medicine. It really is. It is. And it's universal too. Yeah. And it's contagious. Yeah. It is the best gift. And so I'm like, okay, if that's one gift that I can give to people, then let it be that. And so even if it's silly, even if it's goofy, which it is, that's most of our content, but it's universally understood. Yeah. And you can laugh at how dumb it is or you can laugh because it genuinely made you laugh but I make myself I laugh I love that and you are somebody I could see that you could make yourself laugh like not a lot of people can make themselves laugh I believe that you can that's what I'm gonna try that next time somebody has something nasty to say to me I'm just gonna say um knock knock <laughs> who's there Brown. Brown who 
I was not ready for that. I have a jokes list in my phone. I that can add that. I'm gonna put, one. The, I'm gonna put that one poo. on there. And I'm gonna say if that nope. didn't make you laugh. Then continue to hate me. Sure, fine. That's good. I feel yes. so much better than I did you 20 seconds ago. <laughs> Thank you for that gift. I told you. The gift of poop. Yeah. Poop jokes. That mental health and controlling inputs, too. If I'm feeling down about something, I will go listen to a good podcast, a yeah. good something that is erases that negative thought. Because yeah. we have, if your family's being mean to you, your friends are being mean to you, you're fighting with your husband, go listen to something that just transports you to a different yeah. landscape than where you're living right now and the way that you're thinking. I watch Grey's Anatomy. Yeah? Yeah, that's what I do when I'm either friends or Grey's Anatomy or I read. Reading really helps me to escape. What do you, what kind of stuff do you read? I really like um, like a dark and twisty romance fiction novel. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. All yeah. right. And then I like a self-help book. Mm -hmm. But that's working out and reading really. I want working out to be it for me so bad, and it's just not. You know what? That's okay because um, I, it used to not be for me. I used to hate it. I used to hate working out, and then I would be like, well, I'm not going to do it. But then I changed the way because I had some serious body dysmorphia and mm -hmm. some, like, disordered eating, and I, like – thought of working out as punishing myself mm -hmm. and I hated it and I switched my attitude and it honestly it, it was I took a intuitive eating course I I went into um dancing with the stars I wanted to feel strong yeah and as soon as I started to like lift weights and feel strong it changed everything mentally for me and now I love working out for <sighs> mental clarity that's so good have you done an ice bath Love an ice bath. Really? Yeah. I just got one. I'm working up to it. I'm okay. scared. Commit. How Commit. cold? It's, well, what do you have your set at? Like 43? That's what I'm thinking. Okay. I haven't done it yet. So I did that in Mexico for my first time. My girlfriend, Erin Trelore, she runs um, Raw Beauty Talks. And um, she's just all about like health and wellness. But in a way where she used to struggle really bad from an eating disorder she like helps people and she does the intuitive eating courses and yeah. i've just i've been friends with her for so long and she so we were both in um cleo's wedding party and we were a little hungover and well i was <laughs> i can't speak for anyone else i was and she was like cold plunge and i was like i can't do a cold plunge there's no way and i like dipped my toe and i was like there's Absolutely. no way and she goes just go in and do at least 30 seconds and so i go in 30 seconds and i'm just like I can't do it. I won't be able to do 30 seconds. I sat in there for 10 minutes. 10, 10 minutes. minutes your first time? Yeah, because all of a sudden you're just numb. I had done it with my feet. When I was on Dancing with the Stars, I did ice baths on my feet every day. Okay. Ooh, that crack was That was nice. nice. That was a deep one. <laughs> <laughs> I felt good. <laughs> Don't touch your feet, Kaylin. But to go fully in, oh my gosh, I sat in there for 10 minutes. And honestly, after two minutes, mm -hmm. I didn't want to get out. I think I was just numb, but... Yeah, so and, you didn't go, like, shock or anything like that. I've heard horror stories. I need to quit putting those inputs oh, in Oh, don't there. do that. No, yeah. Or make a viral video about going into shock in one. <laughs> <laughs> is, I want to do some cool ice bath videos. Yeah, you should. I got some ideas. That, too. Just, that'll shock your system right up. Like, if I ever have bad anxiety, uh, getting cold makes me feel really so much better. Like, I'll okay. dump my face in, like, an ice water um, bowl. Really? Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. I like to get cold. I'll go, like, take off all my clothes. What's with me and being naked? Um, and just, like, lay on awesome. the whole bathroom yes. floor. Being naked really is awesome. It I is. love it. I know. Oh, we got to be, our house is a bunch of windows, and I'm naked most most of the time. Yeah. And then sometimes people come to work early. And you're like, and I'm like oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. We're very close now. <laughs> <laughs> I remember watching Kesha do an interview. No, not Kesha. Megan Trainer. She said that she would get because she has had a kid and she was really self-conscious about her body so she stood in the mirror mm -hmm. and she would stand there i think she'd set a timer i can't remember how many minutes and at first she said she was just shaking and like didn't want to do <gasps> it you saw yes, that yes yes and then by like day three she was like that rolls kind of cute and like that yeah. dimple and she said it just got easier and easier every day and i think <sighs> I don't know. I've always been kind of like a free bird with being naked. Even mm -hmm. when I was really self-conscious, I would still be like, that's fun. Naked feels good. Um, and I feel like everybody should do that. Just embrace your naked little body. I think people could learn a lot from that. Just seeing it because it's hard to just stand in a mirror naked and uh, affirm yourself. Yeah. Because every part of your brain doesn't want to do that. Yeah. But I think it's small steps, like she was saying, with anything to get confidence back. Yeah. It's like yoga. It's a practice. You're not going to be it good at it day steps. one, you know. So this 
book that I'm listening to, it talks about micro shifts where everybody expects this big bang to happen where yeah. your life just changes and everything falls into place. And mm -hmm. like they wait for this big moment. And so they don't realize the little micro shifts that are happening throughout your days, weeks, months, hours, whatever that are leading you to those big moments mm -hmm. and that we forget to like appreciate the micro shifts. Do you control the micro shifts or do you just observe them as they observe happen to you? Observe them as they happen. Okay. You can, con I wouldn't say control, you can... You can. I'm saying, like, if you have a goal, though, if you're like, here's a goal, yeah, and I gotta to break work. it down into like monthly, weekly, daily micro shifts, yeah. and then eventually you're like, oh my god, I'm so much farther along than I thought. Yeah. Whether you're trying to lose weight or trying to grow your hair out or right. whatever you're doing, you have to just notice all the little progress along the way. Yeah. It really does make a. It's you know, it's the gratitude of the people talk about all the time. It really does make such a difference. A huge difference. Um. I could talk to you for a lot longer, but we're coming up on an hour and I would like to. Already? Um, oh my gosh. I know. Wow. This was a really nice conversation. I loved it. Um, okay. Uh, so it's called Viral Video Voices. Okay. So would you say you're familiar with viral videos? Yes. Okay. So I have three second sound bites from some of the top viral YouTube videos of all time. Oh, And sweet. I want to see if you can guess the sound bite. That's fun. Okay. Okay. This is going to be so embarrassing about Mo for three. No, you're going to get this one. Stop. I can't breathe. <laughs> Great lady. <laughs> that was epic. Great lady. That oh, was oh, oh. And then Stewie recreated it on Family Guy once and it was really? so funny. Okay. I hope you get this one. It's one of my Tell favorites. Me too. One second. What did you think about the ride? It was oh. oh. That's not I like turtles, kid. Nope. Oh, I love that kid though. <gasps> I like turtles. What? Okay. One second. What did you think about the ride? It was great. It was great. No. And apparently, no. What? Wait, I've seen people say like the apparently thing. Is that from something that I don't even know the genesis of? What do you think about the ride? It was great. And apparently, Dad. I've never been on live Dad. television before. And apparently, Grandpa just gives me a remote after we watch the Powerball. Last one. I keep thinking I know the ones that you're going to play. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie bit my finger. Oh my god, that was good! I was like, we didn't give you much to work with there. That was so. two giggles. Woo. Two highly identifiable giggles. That's really that's good. That's one I was hoping you were going to play, because that's maybe one of my favorites of all oh, time. it's just the best. I will never forget being like, what is this YouTube thing that's making me laugh? And that's the best, because you can't ever recreate that. You can't recreate that if you try. No. Like, no. now it's a lot more of trends, like the chest wax kickball. Right. Like we've done, we're, we're, we, did, we are working for it now. Yeah, <laughs> to just entertain people, but you can't yeah. stage moments. So when we have got to do it as a job, you got to stage most things because you can't capture magic like that. It would take you filming all week for <laughs> one video. <laughs> I love it. So wait, I'm going to get this, and this is... If you... If the alligator bites you, you have to tell me a confession. Oh, okay. You go, ah! Sorry. <laughs> Are you a really reactive person? Yes. Because I am too. Which... Oh, <laughs> is that like a 50 50 shot? That's really oh my god, I went to the bathroom like... before this. See? Wow. Okay. It's that intuition. <laughs> that like, intuition is locked. <laughs> okay, oh. confess. Confess to me. <sighs> okay. This one's recent. Okay. I got. <laughs> I'm not this gross normally. Okay. <laughs> but I am. I, well, maybe I am. Yeah. I got fired from my doctor a couple months ago and she calls me she's like I can't see you anymore because I'm ADD and you got to go and you got to pee in a cup every few months to make sure you're not on anything that is bad for you like meth or coke you can't right. be on any of that right. stuff while you're on Adderall so um, I go in for a refill I hadn't had any in a few days so I go in and I go and I go I'm starting to pee in the cup um, but I'm just like answering an email or scrolling TikTok or something and I pee and I'm still holding the cup <laughs> Because I'm ADD and I'm like, oh my God, I can't stay here much longer. Like, I got to go. Right. I was supposed to do this and get out. And the whole point of being there. So I just Scooped. I just scoop it out. Yeah. And I'm like, well, let me just get enough in there to where they can separate right. it out. I mean, they're scientists. Yeah. They right. If, it but they'll have enough urine. They can separate it out from the toilet water yeah. and everything else. And yeah. then they'll know I'm not on meth. <laughs> <laughs> and then they'll know I'm not on meth. 
Yeah, I'm like they'll they'll sort Your it out. If they, they can't do that, we there? have bigger problems. <laughs> yeah. You know, so surely. And then. So when she calls me, she goes, your, the, uh, your urine sample came back, I mean, mixed with all types of cleaning supplies and things like this. And I'm like, oh, well, here's why. Like, I did, I forgot to pee in the cup because I'm ADD. So I just scooped it out and figured y'all could figure it out. <laughs> she goes, Dad, that's not how that works. You can't dilute your pee when you're doing a drug test. <laughs> They're like, so you've been drinking Clorox bleach yeah. and cleaning supplies. Yeah. She was like, I can't see you anymore. You got to go see a psychiatrist. And I'm like... <laughs> Oh my God. And how fitting, I suppose. I'm like, I really thought y'all could sort it. And she goes, no, we can't. You can't dilute a drug test, you idiot. I, she was giggling, so I think she believed me. Oh, yeah. She goes, but everyone she who dilutes She was like, are you their... doing the thing you do? Am I being recorded? <laughs> this is a bit. Yeah, this is a bit. <laughs> oh, I should have. But no, I, this was genuine. But then I it's a good confession. diluted it's... the drug test, and apparently oh. that's why you take a drug test. That's is incredible. just to make sure it's just pee. Wow. What's in there? So that's you know, embarrassing. That's very funny. Emails, pee cup. Yeah. Whoops. The whole thing you're there to do. Yeah. Everybody's done it though. You go to do one thing. Oh my God. Maybe that's my confession. Just... I went, I had a pain. Like, I honestly thought it was my um, appendix. And I, I have a really big fear of throwing up. So I was like, I got to get there before our, like the vomit starts happening. Ooh. So I go to. Uh, Wait, which side is your appendix on? You're right. Okay. So I go and I'm telling the doctor this. And she was like, okay, well, we'll get you to pee in a cup. I pee in the cup. So embarrassing. She comes back again. She was like, Whoo! <laughs> she was like, Hi over that right away. And I was like, oh, Ooh. And I was like, Oh my okay. So that comes Dramatic. From... <laughs> what? Yeah. So Did you notice it smelled worse than like normal pee? No, but I think that I think I have a lot of um acid in my stomach. Yeah. But I also hadn't eaten yet and had just uh -huh. come from a workout and I was really dehydrated uh -huh. and nothing in my stomach and so I was sitting there thinking I had appendix like appendicitis and she was like I think you just need to poop <laughs> <laughs> so $200 later I find out my pee smells and I needed to poop yeah, that's, you just had to go to the bathroom yeah just had to poop it up I didn't know this, this was an educational a, yeah, this podcast is always always something educational comes out of the confessions <laughs> um so viralish.com forward slash oh, create, create if you want to learn we'll just I mean, we'll give you our formula we'll break down how we exactly what we're doing in these videos and then eventually we'll do we're going to go into much deeper training like if you actually want to do this as a job okay. here's what you do so it's the smart. same way we've taught everybody else so you know? smart i need your help um and you also don't. where can everybody follow you and laugh and feel joy yeah on instagram it's just adley adley tiktok is that's it you just claimed adley yeah at adley at adley adley okay, beyonce <laughs> oh, that's amazing it was an inactive profile for like 12 years not one post on it and i was like yes that's incredible because then they could give it to me yeah you know so oh. got lucky and then it. Facebook like dot com if anybody's still on facebook yeah. <laughs> um, there are or a lot tiktok of people is like on. forward slasher at the adley show Amazing. You should follow my husband too, though. His videos are better than mine right now. We're really? I'm just helping him make his stuff. It's Blake dot Kinsman on TikTok. Really? And his stuff is great. Okay. Well, yeah. And after that story, I'm going to follow him too. Well, thank you so yeah. much for coming over Thanks and coming on the pod. Me. It's so nice. I love when I can like have friends over in Nashville and podcast at the same time. I'm like, this yes. is amazing. It's so easy. Because she has had a kid and she was really self conscious about her baby. Mm hmm. About her baby, <laughs> about her baby's body. <laughs> <laughs> that came out wrong. Uh, okay, just let me get to my Dropbox. <laughs> okay. I think it's in your AirPod. <gasps> Ali just looked at me. She goes, "I think it's in your AirPod." She's yeah. looking at me like, don't you know that one? You can't, like, I can't hear anything. Okay, disconnecting. <laughs> How many chances okay. do I get? <laughs> oh! What? Wait, I've seen people say like the apparently thing. Is that from something that I don't even know the genesis of? You don't know the apparently kid? I don't think so. Maybe I do. Is it old? Is it yes. new? It's old. One hour later. Okay, wait, how do I go back? Okay. Wow, this really doesn't want me to... Oh, you know what? Screw it, I'm you showing what? you text on my me phone. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to text you a link. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll clip it in here somewhere. I'm Caitlin Bristow. I'll see you next Tuesday. See you next Tuesday.